Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about Bevy. Now Bevy is a Rust powered game engine. They just released Bevy 0.13. What you see in front of you, this is a 3D scene running showing uh, the lighting and rendering capabilities of Bevy in action. I'll just keep this going while I talk for a bit. I'll also show you where you can go ahead and get this scene if you'd like later on. Uh, but yeah, Bevy uh, 0.13 was just released. Unfortunately, they actually release things on a weekend, uh, especially on a long weekend, which is why this is a little bit late to cover. They're literally the only game engine out there that does that uh, and basically nobody watches news videos on the weekend so this is coming to you a little bit late uh, but bevy 0.13 what exactly can you expect in this release and what is bevy all about in the first place well, first things first, this is Bevy. Bevy is available at bevyengine.org. This is a Rust-powered game engine. It is data-driven. Right now, it is a framework only, but as you will see in a couple of minutes, we are looking at uh, creating an editor. They're basically doing some experiments and works in progress to make that happen. And as you can also see from some of the new features here, they really need an editor because they're adding a lot of like baking and light mapping tools uh, that you have to do externally. Right now, you might have to do them in Blender, for example, to get things to work and they definitely need to move this functionality over. But it's full 2D, 3D renderer, PBR workflow, customizable render graph. Uh, you've got full animation support in there. It's available for Windows, Linux, Mac, OS, uh, iOS, and Android. I believe those two were just added in Bevy 0.12, so we're only one release past that. Uh, a full UI system's in place. It's got an ECS, or an Entity Component System, as the underlying control structure, but there's also a world system that you can use for loading and saving of levels. So they've got all of the plumbing they need to create create a level editor. Uh, they just haven't got the level editor yet. Uh, then we got things like sound. We've got hot reloading functionality in there. Uh, it does compile fast. Again, it is Rust-based, and this guy is 100% open source under the uh, uh, permissive MIT or Apache licenses. Both super straightforward. It costs you nothing to use Bevy, uh, which is a very cool thing. So that is Bevy, the overview. Again, bevyengine.org if you want to learn more about that. But we're talking specifically here about Bevy 0.13. And we're going to do the TLDR summary here because there's a lot here 672 pull requests 198 contributors overall uh, they have some guides to move from 0.12 to 0.13 if you are doing the migration but here is the tldr on the new functionality so we've got a new light mapping system again there is no light mapping baked in because there is no editor so hopefully this is one of those things they get an editor for so they can have the light mapping tools built in but you can currently bake light mapping there is a tool out there called the light mapper which enables you to bake light mapping that you could then use here here. Uh, this is a way of doing global illumination on scenes that don't change. Uh, so light maps are faster than global illumination, like real-time global illumination solutions, uh, and uh, but they're, they're pre-baked. So it's a pre-cooking process. You run your assets through a light mapper, uh, but they now support that. On top of that, they also support a baked form of global illuminations in the form of radiance volumes or voxelized global illuminations. Once again, these need to be baked in another program such as Blender. And this is one of those things like, for example, Godot has voxelized global illumination as well, but it has the tooling built directly into the editor. So we're starting to really run up against the, where you don't have the, the limits of not having your tooling cooked in, uh, pun not intended. Uh, so we got approximated indirect specular occlusion, so improved lighting realism by reducing specular light leaking. We'll see an example of this in just a second. Uh, reflection probes, uh, a baked form of axis-aligned environment maps that allows for realistic reflections for static geometry. Once again, baked externally. Once again, really could use that built-in level editor to get this stuff in there. The other cool thing is we now have uh, primitive shapes, so you've got the ability to do uh, kind of quick, easy things like spheres, rectangles, cubes, and so on. Uh, uh, and then there's also a new mesh baking system that takes advantage of them. Uh, they've got system stepping. This is a way of basically, again, this is an entity component system uh, engine here. And if you need to run your game logic on a, like a frame by frame, step by step basis, you can now do that. There's also a new breakpoint system in here as well. And then on top of the ECS, one of those things when you have all your world organized into this structure is you're going to need to have a way of querying them. Uh, so there is a new dynamic query system here. So you can uh, do uh, runtime types uh, searches. Uh, there are some downsides to this. It's probably something you don't want to use unless you very specifically have to do it. But there is now support for dynamic query, uh, which will uh, allow you to do runtime defined type querying as well. Uh, automatically inferred command flush points. Uh, we're getting into the world of uh, Rust here that I'm not that competent in, so I can't explain to you uh, the overall advantage of this. Uh, but now Bevy scheduler uses ordinary dot before and dot after constraints and 
inspects the system parameters to automatically infer and deduplicate synchronization points. And then we have 9patch system. 9patch is a uh, popular image format often used for UIs that have to scale. Uh, you kind of render a 2D image from nine pieces. So the top left corner, top right corner, top frame, side rail, bottom rail, uh, bottom corner, uh, each point, and then allows you to scale out uh, kind of whatever the contents are inside and it's going to look nice and consistent. So they now have support for slice and tiling and nine patch 2D images. Uh, we also have camera driven UI. So previously you had like a single UI layer and all your UI elements were relative to it. So if you had a single viewport, no, no issue at all. And frankly, it hasn't changed. But as soon as you had like two cameras, for example, for split screen, doing UI layout in them got quite difficult. Now there is uh, a UI layout basically per camera, which makes life much easier to work with. And then we've got real world or realistic control over camera exposures via EV100, f-stop shutter speed, and ISO sensitivity. And lights have also been adjusted to make their units more realistic. So if you're using real world lighting and um, f-stop settings, shutter speeds, and so on, which controls, you know, the amount of light that comes into each shot or each frame of the camera, that kind of thing, uh, it is now implemented in this. And then we've got animation interpolation modes. So Bevy now supports nonlinear interpolation Interpolation modes in exported GLTF uh, animations. So that is the TLDR. There's a lot more detail about all of these things. Again, you do have light map baking, baking, but you do need to use an external tool. There is a link to one. For example, here, the light mapper, which is a tool that can bake out light maps for you that you could then import into Bevy. Just one of those things to be aware of. Ditto for the irradiance volumes and glo uh, voxel global illumination. There's an example of it in action. So you can see here, as this guy moves around, watch when it goes specifically over the blue. You're going to see some of the, the light basically bouncing over to the sphere. So here we go. See that getting a little bit of the bluish tinge, a little bit of the green, a little bit of the red, and a little bit of the purple as it goes. So basically uh, that is your um, uh, irradiance volumes coming out. Uh, again, this does need to be baked in an external program. Uh, reflection probes, you can see the action in there. Uh, the indirect specular occlusion, you can see the results of it right here. So look at the spring as an example. Watch what happens to the spring with specular occlusion on. So it, it gets sort of like, some things just get overlit, I guess, or over reflected and specular occlusion is kind of getting rid of that. The spring is the most profound example. You can see it in some other aspects of this demo, uh, but definitely the spring makes it the most obvious exactly what is happening here. Uh, and then again, we do have primitive shapes, a number of them. So rectangles, circle, ellipse, triangles, uh, polylines, capsules, and so on. And then we've got 3D things like cones and spheres uh, and cylinders and so on. Uh, and then on top of that, there is the ability to um, rendered in the new rendering primitives example is available out there and there is a new meshing uh, so this enables you to mesh down your your shape out to um, a 3d mesh i guess you want to store it to disk or whatever so you can see some of the 2d and 3d shapes in action and what they look like there it makes definitely prototyping easier going on uh pr primitives can also be re rendered with gizmos uh and then we've got uh, bounding volumes. Uh, we've got uh, access aligned bounding box uh, 2D and 3D, a bounding circle and a bounding sphere. Also have uh, ray casts into those bounding volumes, which is quite nice. So again, ray casting and volume casting into those volumes. Uh, bounding volumes is definitely one of those things you use quite often. So if you're defining certain areas, rooms, or triggers, uh, you're going to generally use a bounding box. Same thing if you're doing overlaps or collision checks, that kind of thing. Uh, here is that stepping system here for walking through the system. Kind of gives you the ability to do a debugger style execution of your code. Uh, right up to including, there's also breakpoints. So step and continue frame there. Uh, and then breakpoint system in there as well. And then, yeah, there's, there's actually, like, again, a ton going on here. Uh, the changes to the camera, so shutter speed, ISO sen um, sensitivity, and aperture have been implemented. So you can see the results of uh, when you change it. So EV100, it's pretty profound. So obviously, it's letting a whole lot less light into it, whereas... Um, there, there's the two different examples and more on it there. The breakdown, so if you want to do the UI thing, it's now per camera, so you can lay things out relative to each camera. Again, if you only have a single camera, it's not going to make a difference, but if you're making a split screen style game, that is an important thing to say. Here is your example of uh, nine patch, the different modes available. But basically there's your, your base texture and it's sliced out and cut. So it, it gives you the ability to like do things like uh, frame a UI control uh, in, a, in a device independent way. So you can just see, scaled to all different sizes for a button, but the corners, each of the one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, I guess nine is the middle. Those are the various different pieces. So here, 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 and here, and then it scales it as you need it. So that is now implemented in here as well. I'm gonna scroll down here to the bottom. There's definitely much more here, including the new query system and so on. Uh, but what I wanna talk about is a little bit of their future talk stuff. Oh, by the way, this uh, asset that I used in the demo uh, is this one right here. It's the San Miguel uh, example right there. I'll show you where you can grab that in just a second, but there have been some performance improvements uh, between Bevy.012 and 013. Uh, not not going to set the world on fire, but you're seeing there like 5 to 10% type improvements. Depends on the scene that you're looking at. Um, but yeah, so let's go on down here to the future section. As you can see, the, the readme goes into a ton more detail of what we covered, but we go into what they're looking at in the future going towards 0.14. Uh, the one big thing, so uh, the list of work is available in the milestones list there, but they do have a number of different experiments going on for an editor. Uh, in fact, this one, the Bevy editor is actually available. You can run it. it it's a working full functioning thing as well. Uh, but we got a couple of different approaches to how they're going to do the editor, if they're going to make it a uh, standalone or if it's going to be an embedded uh, into the executable kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the future of Bevy, uh, they have a bit of a talk here. And then once again, they do have their milestones list where they're going to be looking at the various different features that they are looking at doing and where they are in terms of those pull requests. So that is going to be Bevy 0.14, probably in about three months time. Uh, but if you are waiting for an editor, uh, don't worry, they are working on that. And as you saw from the tooling in this example, you know, with all the new light mapping and, and voxel illumination and such, that they need to bake using an external program, they're kind of hitting the, the point where not having a full integrated editor is starting to hurt them. Uh, and, and, you know, needing to have all these other tools to take advantage of these features is annoying. So hopefully this is something that starts happening very soon. Uh, again, the example that I got here is the Bevy San Miguel scene. Uh, it has been uh, exported specifically for Bevy. You want to go ahead and check that one out. Uh, it is available up on GitHub. Uh, there's also, uh, you can grab the OBJ format versions, or you can log into their Discord and grab the GLTF versions, which is what I use. It's got slightly better foliage examples, and that's about it. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That is a Bevy 0.13. Again, this is coming a little bit late because once again, Bevy is the only engine out there that releases on the weekend when absolutely nobody is paying attention. And on top of that, they released this time on a long weekend where especially nobody was paying attention, especially in North America, that is. So a few days late on this one, but Bevy 0.13. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.